kayo, takot kayong mag-guidance. Meron tayong perception na pag napag-guidance, ayaw natin. Kasi malupit. No? Pero, ang Biblia ay sapat. It is our supreme and final authority to say that church discipline must be done in our churches. So, of all the passages that are related to church discipline, I chose sorry that uh, that that should be Galatians chapter 6 verse uh 1 to 5. Let's look at the epistle of Paul to the Galatians in chapter 6 verse 1 to 5. So as we read, we must take reverence to the word of God. I will read from the New American Standard Bible. Brethren, even if anyone is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Each one looking to, your, to yourself so that you too will not be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But each one must examine his own work, and then he will have reason for boasting in regard to himself alone, and not in regard to another. For each one will bear his own. The book of Galatians talks about the importance of the gospel in our lives. Lalo na maraming nagsasabi na may another gospel. Lalo na yung mga Judaizers na uh, pinutukoy ni Pablo Rito that uh, you must be circumcised in order for you to be included in the community. That is why in the, in the first chapter of Galatians, Wala nang patumpik-tumpik si Pablo. Wala nang pasapasalamat. Inaddress niya ka na, na kaagad ang problema sa Galatia. Paul reminds the believers that they are now free in Christ. In chapter 5, verse 1. So, the question is, how then should we live? Tumalaya na tayo sa Panginoong Isokristo, hindi na tayo nasa ilalim ng kautusan, hindi na, uh, hindi na tayo Wala na tayo sa kapangyarihan ng kasalanan. Paano tayo magubuhay? So there are other groups called the Libertinians or liber, uh, Libertarians in my lecture. No? They are offering self-centered excesses. We don't need a specific instruction to live in accordance to Christ. The spirit uh, Judaizers, on the other hand, they offer to put them under the law. Baga, kung talagang malaya kayo sa Panginoong Isa Kristo, idagdag nyo ito. But reminder, uh, false, re false reminder is that the spirit-filled life is not only fully adequate to maintain and confirm one's status of righteousness before God. It also provides fully for the life of righteousness that God expects of His people. So kung ikaw ay pinalaya ng Panginoong sa Kristo, hindi mo na ito gagamitin para sa iyong pansariling pagnanasa. At ang iyong kalayaan ay dapat mong gamitin para sa paglakad sa Espiritu, hindi lamang ikaw, hindi ang iyong mga kapatid. If you are living in the Spirit, we must walk by or in the Spirit. So in chapter 6, verse 1, to maintain the spiritual progress within the community, they must fulfill their obligation to each other. And that is in verse 1. If anyone who does not walk in the Spirit, if anyone is caught in any trespasses, according to ESV, you who are spiritual should restore him in the spirit of gentleness. Kaya ito ang kailangan nating matutuman sapagkat the concept of restoration is being blurred. 
lalo na sa pag-implement uh, pag, uh, ng church discipline. Restoration must happen. So, I want to teach this morning that spiritual restoration is the main agenda of church discipline that needs a closer look. Spiritual restoration, ang pagpapanumbalik, ang pagpapanatili sa espiritu, ang ating pamunahing layunin, kaya tayo nagdidisiplina sa iglesia at kailangan magkaroon ng mabuti pagsisuri. According to Oxford Dictionary, when you say discipline, it is the practice of training people to obey rules or a code of behavior. In, in instruction and using punishment to correct disobedience. So we also agree to that definition na sabi, ni, sabi sa Oxford Dictionary. Why? Because Jesus Christ uh, in, uh, in authority over uh, in heaven and on earth, we are commanded to make disciples of all nations. So maraming churches na doon nang nakatingin sa going and baptizing. At nakakalimutan nila yung third na participle ng make disciple, which is to uh, observe the commandments that I have taught you. Christ commands His church to make disciples holy on the whole, uh, in the entirety of the definition of making disciple. Pero meron tayong mga problema. Sa ating panahon, merong spirit of the Judaizer. They are promoting additional laws above what Jesus Christ has set. Kailangan aktibo ka sa ministeryo para masabi ikaw ay bahagi pa rin ng iglesia. Kailangan masalihan mo itong mga ministeryo ito para masabi ikaw ay nagpapatuloy. No? Pero walang pagpapahalaga sa church discipline. Sa isang statement, we can say that the spirit of Judaizers say the church discipline is not enough. Ito sa pat. Kailangan magdagdag tayo sa ating pagsasanay. While the spirit of the libertarians, they promote freedom through the guise of loving one another. So sinasabi naman nila na church discipline is not loving. Tayong magdisiplina sa iglesia para hindi tayo mabawasan. Huwag tayong magtanggal ng gitarista kasi hindi natin mabubuo yung isang kanta pag wala rin. Church discipline is not loving. Konti na nga lang tayo, magbabawas pa tayo. When sa bagay, when two or three gathered in my name, okay na yun, dalawa tatlo, iglesia na tayo. To hear church discipline is like uh, you are hurting the church in general. You are not loving your brother. But the Bible says very clearly, first and foremost, that the Bible teaches us on how to exercise discipline. Church discipline. Because the Bible is sufficient and ultimate basis for discipline. That is the very essence of the scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. It is the inspired word of God for what? For correction, for rebuke, for reproof, for teaching in righteousness so that every uh, man of God will be equipped in good works. Hindi lang yun. Kanina ang tinuro sa atin, if you know your sheep, you know whom you need, whom the Lord must receive. Yun ang sinasabi sa Hebrews chapter 12. Di ba? The father disciplines his children. No? If I'm gonna read that, sabi sa Hebrews chapter 12. Sabi dito, And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? Verse 5. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be wary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one He loves and chastises every son who He receives. At sinabi pa rito sa verse 10, 
or they discipline us for a short time as it seemed best to them, but He disciplined us for our good that we may share His body. You have a, a definite relationship to God, you will, you will be treated as His children. At kung i-extend yung illustration kanina ng lecturer, nag-aaya ka ng kumain, pero yung kapit-bahay, kung magulang mo, may, nag uh, may nag-away ng mga bata, ang una mong didisiplinahin yung anak mo at hindi yung iba mga bata. So that's the, uh, that's the essence of church discipline. So my initial appeal is to evaluate our knowledge about church discipline if it aims to restore. Kailangan nandun tayo sa pananaw that the church discipline is, in, is the maintaining mark of a church. Kaya nga, ang tanong kanina, how then should we live? Alam mo kung sino yung mga membro mo, pero ang tanong, anong nagawin natin? Nandito tayo sa church, ipitigyan nyo ba tayo dito? Hindi. We must observe God's commands until he come. So the question is, how should the Church of Christ faithfully exercise discipline that aims to restore? So I have two sub-points here. First is the conscious implementation of the Scripture. Paul commands focuses on restoration of anyone who does not keep in step with the Spirit. That's why he began in verse 1, Brothers. Of course, hindi na mga lalaki ito, kundi anyone who is freed in Christ and uh, anyone who is part of the spiritual community. Brothers. Okay? Who must be restored? Sabi doon sa next na phrase, if anyone who is caught in any transgression, sa ibang mga translations, uh, uh, Sabi sa New King James Version, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass. So, being caught in any transgression means that this believer is walking waywardly or that brother or sister is surprised na hindi siya lumalakad sa pananampalataya. Maybe the person is not conscious or deliberate in committing sin. So when when people like that are inside the church, what should we do? Who should act? So who should act is uh, clearly, sinabi ni Pablo, sabi niya, you who are spiritual. So ibang mga commentaries, they would say na itong mga spiritual na ito, yung mga Judaizers, they feel that they are above others. Pero in the harmony of Paul's thought, sabi niya, these spiritual are those who are led by the Spirit and live by the Spirit. It was mentioned in chapter 5, verse 18 and verse 25. Yun ang sinasabi ni Paul. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. So if anyone who is walking in the Spirit but another is not walking or staying in step with the Spirit, you who are spiritual should restore it in the spirit of gentleness. When we say restoration, according to Paul's usage, it pertains to the mending of the nets and repairing dislocated bones. Dito sa kabite, no? Maraming mga labat na ginagamit para magpatuyo na dahi. Hindi na pa. So kung paano ka makapagpatuyo ng maayos kung sira ang labat mo? Paano ka makakahuli? So yun ang ibig sabihin na restoration dito. You are restoring one, a believer that is caught in any transgression to return into its former use. Kung paano siya magiging kagamit na so, restoration is a proactive duty of the church as their conscious obligation to observe God's commands. 
when we say conscious implementation of the scriptures in light of restoration, you know the essential components of restoration. You know who God is, He is holy, at hindi niya hayaan yung kabanalan niya sa kanyang iglesia na madumisan. You are set apart for holy service. And then, there must be the essential component of knowing yourself as a man created in God's image, fallen into sin, who is in need of restoration in Christ. So, kailangan nandun tayo sa pananaw na yung tindi ng kasalanan ay eh, kailangan uh, mabago ng Panginoong Isokristo, pero hindi ibig sabihin your status is you are justified by faith alone, in Christ alone, you will not live as if you're holy. Kailangan magpatuloy ka sa kabanalan. Kaya nga, sinasabi natin, we are righteous yet a sinner. And of course, the truth about God's community. If we are all righteous yet a sinner, we must act when sin is being exposed. Nakikita yung kasalanan. There must be restoration. There will be no restoration if the church is passive. That is why the rationale of restoration is both offensive and defensive. Offensive means the church's stance stands according to chap uh, Matthew chapter 15 verse 18 to 19 is to storm the gates of hell. Kailangan nasa advance tayo ang ibang helio hindi siya passive. Hindi siya kung bubuha ka lang ng ibang helio hindi. Optional lang holiness hindi. Kundi the church ang sabi doon and the gates of hell will not prevail against them the body of Christ. At kung yun ang tingin natin sa restoration, sa church discipline, we aim to kill any scheme of the enemy. Binabantayan natin. We are vigilant. Hindi tayo passive. In, the, uh, in, in what I mean by defensive also, uh, on the other hand, is that we are preserving the holiness of the body of Christ. We defend the name of Christ inside the church. Maybe sabihin natin in a defensive mode. Sabi sa Colossians 1, 28, Him we proclaim, teaching, uh, admonishing in all wisdom. No? Sabi sa verse 28, Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. So there is both warn, uh, proclaiming, there's the essence of warning, okay, and teaching everyone with all wisdom. So dapat malino ngayon sa atin. The truth about God, the truth about man, the truth about sin, the truth about Christ. Because we believe that our out, while our outward man is wasting away, our inner man is being renewed day by day. That is what we mean by restoration. Now, this is what should we look closely. Restoration is being hindered by attempting to cast doubt on sin and holiness. Ano ba yung binibigay na alitlangan ng kaaway on the issue of sin and holiness. I am involved with so many discussions about mental health at ang sabi nila, itong behavior mo ay kasalanan. Ay, ang itong behavior mo ay disorder at hindi kasalanan. The behavior that was that is supposed to be normal, they're categorizing it as disorder. Ayan, anong mangyayari pag ano? Hindi mo makita na yun ay kasalanan. Especially if it's really explicitly being uh, addressed in the scripture. Halimbawa, no, mga sexual immorality. Mas sabihin, hindi, ang sabi ng doktor ko, ano lang yan, sexual dysfunction, hindi ako dapat disiplinan. Pastor, meron po bipolar disorder, hindi po ako pwede disiplinan. 
So, nawawala yung essence ng sin dahil nakakategorize na siya sa ating panahon. Sa kabilang banda, merong mga matitinding kasalanan pero nami-minimize. No? Nami-minimize yung sin. Uh, while on the other hand, may mga kasalanan na mababa naman, hindi naman ganun uh, na matinding kasalanan pero pinapalala. At yun ang challenge ngayon sa mga churches na nakakapasok na na nahihinder yung restoration dahil nagkakaroon ngayon ng twisting when it comes to the definition of sin. And of course, and the issue of holiness. Matagal na ako sa church. Baka ako na pinakabanal dito. Hindi ko na kailangan ng disiplina. Lagi naman akong nasa church. Aktibo naman ako sa mga gawain. Lagi akong nasa Bible study. Lagi ako nagpe-pray. Hindi ko alam kung gaano ako pigil ng kaawa. Kahit matagal ka na sa church, you are still taught to be holy because the enemy is in double time to hinder God's redemptive plan. That is how the enemy casts doubt on holiness. At meron pa ng mga issues about holiness na kagaya nga nung issue doon sa mga backsliding, pwede ako uh, hindi ko hindi ko maintindihan ko what it means to be holy. What it means to what it means to uh, to discipline myself. Na nandun ka naman sa path of holiness, pero wala kang assurance. So, God's word sets not only the principles and the process, He also sets the manner of doing it. Kanina, pinakita natin sa principles, pinakita natin, uh, ngayon, I want to discuss the process. Ang sabi sa Matthew chapter 18, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault. Mayon ang ang tingin mo sa forgiveness, pastor. Kailangan siya ang lumapit sa akin. Pero ang sabi daw sa majority ng malino, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault. Kaya na hinder ang restoration, kasi may mababang view about forgiveness. Dun dun nga tingin sa horizontal aspect ng forgiveness. Pero hindi nila nakikita at hindi nila binibigyang important yung, yung vertical relationship with forgiveness. You are forgiven by God and God has been compassionate to you. Doon agad, nahihinder ang restoration. Ngayon, kap- ang nangyayari, nai-skip yung part na yun. At doon agad sa second part. E total, uh, nag-aantay na lang kami. E kaso lumala dahil tumagal yung kasalanan. So, ini-involve mo ngayon ng mas marami. The process is, nawawala yung proseso, hindi na siya. So, yun ang nais kong talakayin dun sa process. And also, the manner is being forgotten. Kumbaga, okay lang na maging offensive yung words ko, as long as you are being being led to restoration. But the manner is clear. Ang sabi sa Galatians chapter 6, your manner must be in the spirit of gentleness. The spirit of patience. Sabi kay Timothy, 2 Timothy, Gen- patiently teaching that God may perhaps grant them repentance. Pero sabihin natin, nasabi ko naman yung gusto ko. Na-open ko siya, tapos sana matauhan siya. It's not how the church discipline should be done. Church discipline should be done first by examining our faith. Are we the, are we the spiritual and mature person of which we spot of faith? So this is my first challenge. Implement church discipline based 
on the character of God and His relationship to Christ. The character of God, we must understand, is merciful, is compassionate, is slow to anger, forgiving, yet uh, forget the kasalanan ng marami. If you really understand the being of God, you will not compromise your sin. If you really honor His holiness, you will implement discipline because you understand that the church must be maintaining that Christ over this life and He washes the church by water and the word. Salita ng Diyos. At dito, that's a challenge yung ating pagiging opinionated pagdating sa church discipline. Feeling ko may kasalanan tong kapatid na to kasi hindi siya nag hindi siya umaasa na parang isang baha. But it's not how you restore a brother. You restore a brother or sister by letting him see himself in the scriptures, by leading him or her to the cross, and helping him in prayer. Kasi kaso, ang nagiging attitude natin, iniiwan natin siya ron, masabi na natin yung gusto natin, yung opinion natin, feeling ko brad, makasalanan ka, magsisi ka. Saan niya yun makikita sa scripture? That is why we must firmly implement by being conscious of what the Bible teaches. What the Bible teaches about sin, what the Bible teaches of what, what is forbidden, the moral law, of course, on what is, uh, what, what duty should we do in accordance to it. The Bible keeps us away from being opinionated. And also, the Spirit helps us to be gentle, to be patient with one another. Mga bata dito, ano? Kapag isa kang magulang, pag ba nagkamali yung anak mo, ura-urada mo ka agad na sasawayin, wala bang patience sa bagay. Pag sila, nagapa sila, o hindi nila nagawa yung gusto natin, di ba minsan, nanginginig din naman natin, sa na agad sawayin. But let us be aware that like children, we must discern of what is immature and what is sinful behavior. Kamamaya. Pastor, disiplinahin natin si kapatid. Meron siyang maiksing suot. Isitay mo kagad. Eh, yung palda niya, below ni naman. Eh, yung standard mo, one inch pa, mas mahaba. So, dapat maging aware din tayo kung paano natin ilalapat yung patient. Hindi naman lahat ng kasalanan agad-agad ipepresent sa church. Alam mo ba si ganitong kapatid? Hindi nagtutupran. No? Ang baho, hindi ako nakapag-worship ng maayos. Well, I'm not being comical, uh, merely comical. Yun ang spirit ng mga Judaizers. Dagdagan natin yung mga kasalanan ay yung mga behavior na tingin ko kasalanan yun, tapos idaan natin sa church discipline. Paano kung ang church nyo nasa kultura na kailangan 2 by 3 ang kupit ng mga lalaki? At kapag hindi sumukat ng 2 by 3, disiplinahin natin. That includes the real aspect of restoration. Not the external, but the heart. Being with the right understanding of God, calling sin as sin, and understanding redemption as freedom in Christ, we will also understand that church discipline maintains the work of the Holy Spirit in the inner man. Church discipline is focused on the inner And remember also your relationship with God. Your relationship is being a child to a father, as a father is a parent to his children. Being involved in the process of restoration does not exempt the devil's work to tempt us. Kaya ang sabi sa verse, uh, verse 1, 
keep watch on yourself lest you to be tempted. Hindi big sabihin na ikaw ang nanini na ang ang nakakapunan ng kasalanan ng isa, wala na ring mapupunang kasalanan sa iyo. At baka sabihin mo na yes, ako yung spiritual. Eh baka kinabukasan, ikaw naman ang nilalapitan dahil nagkasala ka sa Hindi porket ikaw ang pinakamatanda sa iglesia, hindi ka na pwedeng masita ng bata. As long as the Bible is the mirror, even a younger believer in the church will offer you to do yourself. But, oh, but still with attitude. And the attitude is me. With respect and with It is only through the sufficiency of the scriptures that every believer in the church will be competent to get involved in the restoration of the sin. When we talk about forgiveness, the Bible speaks many things about forgiveness. And also the church, uh, the scriptures teaches us that church discipline must be done also. Most importantly, in prayer. It's not like a mere formal tradition in the church to exercise church discipline. Church discipline is a spiritual thing. So they are battling against uh, the spiritual enemy of the church. So that's the question. Are you consciously implementing this? Conscious means you're not just using the scripture, you understand the scripture as what it uh, what it teaches. You're not using the scriptures to serve your own desires or your own intentions to offend a brother. You must understand the truths that were originated from the scripture. Next is Consistent interdependence among believers. Paul states the dynamics within the community in the language of bearing burdens. Kanina nabanggit yun sa lecture. Sa language sa New Testament, there is always uh, the aspect of serving one another, the praise one another. But this is interesting in verse 2 to 5. When we say, Bear one another's burdens, but let each one examine his own work. There are two, uh, two definitions, two usages of the word uh, burdens no? and uh, yung load. No? Sa verse 2, sabi dito, bear one another's burden. The burden here means heavy or oppressive object. Mabigat. Bagay. But in verse 5, the Greek word that was used is, and I know that you're familiar with the word, portion. Portion means normal load or object. So the dynamics that Paul offers in the ministry of restoration, the church must bear one another's burden. So pag mabigat, at hindi na kayang buhatin, papasanin niyo ng buong iglesia. But on the other hand, in verse 5, there are, we have our own portion that we must bear on our own. Yung normal load. Meron tayong mga kanya-kanya mga pasanin at meron din kabuang pasanin ng iglesia na kinakailangan ng church. So my point is that church discipline is an interdependent effort of the church. It is both individual and collective. Interdependence means you are humbly dependent on help when you need it most while being independent in your normal responsibilities. Being in the body of Christ means that you are dependent on the Holy Spirit's work. You are desperate every day of the gospel. We cannot outgrow our need of the gospel. So being dependent on help means that you need others to 
help you what sins are uh, what sins are you possibly committing nasaan ka na sa maturity mo sa paglakad mo sa kabanalan that is what we mean by humbly dependent dependent ka sa bawat isa kanina nga no uh, ibig sabihin parte ka na yun lang ang parte ng iglesia your one body of Christ at yung dependence mo ay nandoon sa isang katawan. Hindi kaya mag-exist ng kamay apart from the body. As a body of Christ, every member, pastors and congregants are expected to fulfill their role. The pastor teaches the flock, the pastor guides the flock, the pastor uh, helps to diagnose spiritual problems, while the members fulfill their responsibilities by disciplining themselves spiritually. Hindi yung iba ang gagawa ng Bible reading para, para sa'yo. We are called for personal progressive sanctification as a body of Christ. The pastors teaches the church what sins should we be vigilant against sa tayo dapat magmatchat ano kasalanan ano mga turo ang dapat natin uh, uh, malaman na hindi uh, na hindi tinuturo ng ating iglesia so the, we must take a closer look on this aspect restoration is being hindered due to unhealthy practices within the local church i have written two Pero meron akong isang bullet point na meron pa isang aspect ito. Una, is unhealthy solitude. Member ka nga ng church, pero sabi mo, okay, member na ako sa isang napakagandang reformed church. Atin na lang ako, eh, kasi, makikinig na ako sa PC. Pero pagdating sa personal holiness, kaya ko na to pare. Wala na akong pakailap sa kanila, basta ako, ano, Bench warmer. Sarap ang pagkain, lunch. At uh, marami na akong libro sa aking library. I can try for holiness on my own. At kapag pinayuhan ka naman, nirebuke ka sa kasalanan mo, ayaw mong pakinggan. Ang sabi sa Proverbs 18.1, if you are isolating yourself, ang sabi doon, you are isolating yourself against all sound judgment. A, ple- a fool takes no pleasure in understanding but only in expressing his opinion. This is my way of understanding holiness. I am in the church but I can do it on my own. And that's unhealthy for you. Unhealthy solitude. Parami naman ako pinapakinggang mga preachers online. Papaalalahanan ko nila ang sarili ko. Do you know that when you were created, you were created also with a blind spot? So, kailangan mo ang ibang tao sa, sa katawan ni Cristo para makita ang dumi sa iyong mata, sa liwanag ng salita ng Diyos. Also, busy body attitude. Kunyari, concerned ka. Sana hindi na umapos ang sinuina. Ipag pa rin natin si ganitong kapatid. Mga reform, mga retest. Uh, uh, nakita ko si kapatid. Hindi ah, na natin makita masyado si kapatid every Sunday. Ano ba nangyari sa kanya? Tapos ikaw naman na nakakaalam ng problema niya, pigil na pigil kang sabihin kung ano yun kasi pinagkatiwalaan ka sa bagay na yun. Pag-pray na lang natin. Pero ikaw naman, gusto ko pag-pray tapos ang issue, ang gusto ko lang pala, malaman yung issue ng kapatid, pero wala kang ginagawa nararapat. Alam mo, nagkasala ang kapatid mo, pero pray ka lang ng pray. Walang lumalapit sa kanya at inaantay niya na ikaw dapat siyo. There is, that attitude is a busy body. Being a busy body means you are you are seemingly concerned about the sufferings of your brother or sister, but you're not doing what is right. Maybe you're praying for her, 
Pero may minsan hindi mo na siya, hindi mo siya nakausap, hindi mo nga yata alam yung pangalan. Di ba? At magtataka ka, nakadisiplina siya. Ano ang ginawa mo sa pinakauna sa proseso? Alam natin, hindi nagkikip in step with the spirit. So, saan tayo natin? Tapos malulungkot ka pagdating ng meeting. Ah, meron tayo nakadisiplina sa mga kapatid. Pag-pray natin. Pero nung time na nagkakasala siya, hindi mo sa pinita. Nangyari, may alam ka ron, pero wala ka dito. Busy body ka lang, may alam ka lang na info, pero you are not doing your obligation as a member of the body. Third, over-dependence on pastor. Kaya na ni pastor yan, disiplinahin. Mag-pray ko na lang siya. Uh, pastor, hindi uh, ko po alam pa paano yung handle si kapatid. Ang maganda sana ang ginawa mo, sinamahan mo si kapatid, na pumunta kay pastor para pareho kayo natuto. Ang magiging resulta, pag gano'n ang tingin natin sa mga pastor, mag-burn out sila na paano. Yun ang nangyayari kay pastor. Kaya humingi siya ng puno, binigyan siya ng payo ng kanya. Church discipline is not a duty of a small portion of the church. Not just the pastor. Meron silang ibibigay na teaching sa atin about a specific sin and what should we do about it. Tinuturo sa atin kung anong magiging attitude natin. Once na may mga unrepentant na believer, ang sabi nga, uh, mark, mark that believer, no? take note of this man, or kailangan siyang separate from the fellowship hindi siya mapapartake ng Lord's Supper. Tinuturo sa atin yun. But church discipline, whether or not, uh, even if you are not specifically involved, na hindi ka part yung nangyari sa kanyang, uh, sa kanyang concern, because you are a member of the church, we are all participants of the church discipline, whether you like it or not. Baka sabihin na isa, makakapimbro ko lang, may problema na naman. Natapat na meeting. Tapos, bagong mana ng palataya ka. Tapos, napasok ang pina ng church. Di ba na ako ng ibang church? Guess what? Kung may church discipline din doon, tapos may meeting din doon, siya katatakbo. Siya katataka. That is the reality of church discipline. If the church are, if the church is indeed faithful, to the scriptures, and they want to walk in the path of holiness, expect the church to implement church discipline. Hindi porket nandito yung tropa mo, magpapamiyembro ka, tapos magugulat ka, may disiplin na nangyayari, tatakbo pa. Hindi ganun yun. Para mo na rin sinabi, am I not my brother's keeper? Nakasalanan ka eh siya naging accountable sa kanyang kapatid. At ang tinuturo sa atin, yes, you are part of the body of Christ, you have our own personal load, but in the area of service, it is both individual and collective. If we are uh, if we are in this kind of attitudes, if if we are isolating ourselves, if we are deceitfully concerned, church discipline will not be implemented properly. And sometimes, it often, end, uh, it, it, it often ends with having emotional bad. Hindi nagawa ng mabuti ang disiplina. Kaya nangyari si kapatid, sa kanilang ng ibang iglesia, nang may sama ng doon sa church dahil hindi din siya nagabayan sa kanyang kapananan. Nakakalungkot po yun kung may lalo na kung walang disiplina. And imagine a believer, he understood na after nito na naintindihan na yung church discipline. Maaari kayong magkaroon ng thinking na ganito. Sana may church discipline sa pinanggalingan kong iglesia. 
para nipatuloy ako sa kabanan. Ganun ka halaga ng church. So this is my last challenge. Seek to cultivate interdependence within the body of Christ based on the reality of sin and the necessity of restoration. First, if you are the spiritual one, seek to guard yourself from devil's temptations by being immersed in the word and prayer. You understand God's duty, uh, God's command to you to restore a brother if he's sinning, and you must understand the work of the Holy Spirit in you. You have to deal it spiritually. Also, the church must exercise spirit-given patience in restoring an offender. From root to the fruit. Mula sa ugat ng kasalanan. Hindi yung nakita natin nagkasala. Okay, matik. Next communication. Okay, the door's now open for you. That's not the church must. We must give spirit-given patience because we cannot measure the praise that God may perhaps grant the person the best. Maging patient tayo. Alamin natin yung ugat. We must listen actively. We must pray. The Holy Spirit will convict the sinner. We must also pray that we will not be proud of our own holiness. And we must also exercise the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, understanding, and self-control. And lastly, remember that we are battling against the schemes of the enemy and the presence of our remaining sin and worldly influence. In my conclusion, church discipline is a wearisome but worthwhile task. I am a sole pastor of our church, and we are faithfully exercising church discipline. Kapag nalaman mo na ang kapatid mo ay nahulog sa kasalanan, hindi ka hindi ka masaya. We are being thorough for the best. At kung ikaw na member ng church, you are not weeping for that sin. You must repent. Because sin really tries to defile our church at hindi na tayo mapatulipan. If someone is committing a sin that is deliberate at hindi na relevant, natin ikatuwa, huwag natin layuan, dahil ang sabi ng salita ng Diyos, rejoice with those in the world. We, for those. It is a worthwhile task. Yan ang laging panalangin ng pastor. Yan ang concern ng mga mana ng palataya sa iglesia. It is a dirty work. But as Uh, it was said a while ago in 2 Corinthians 3.13 But as for you, do not be wary of doing it. Do not be wary of doing it. Kahit mabigat, kailangan ko it. Because we honor the holiness of God and the holiness of the church. It exposes our own sinfulness so that restoration may be implemented. A closer look must be done to analyze what areas of our personal and church life need help. Are you afraid to be involved in church discipline? If you are a Christian, you ought to be involved. How? By understanding the Word, understanding what sin is, understanding the work of the Holy Spirit, and understanding our interdependence towards one another. We must analyze our own maturity, our own understanding of the church. 
As long as the gospel is faithfully preached and applied, the church is maintained. Sa mga nagigong iglesia, may the Lord continue to bless our church through this name. Church discipline might be hard for you, but just like in Acts chapter 14, verse 22, through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom. Our God, you have set, set us apart into holiness. Thank you for saving us through Christ by faith. Yet we understand, Lord, that the path of holiness is hard. The life of being in the church is hard. It is not a mere superfluous. It is a fellowship of fellow sufferers and sinners in need of her word. Help us, Lord, to exercise the discipline of bearing one another's burden while bearing our own load. Help us, Lord, to have a deeper sense of sin in a deeper sense of fellowship, that we are accountable to one another, and all the more our leaders are accountable to you. We pray, Lord, that we be faithful in exercising you, knowing that you promised that you will give us eternal life, that we may be blameless on that day, and we may be commented, saying, well done, good and free. Help us, Lord. Have mercy on us. In Jesus' name.